What's up everybody, Clever Croc back for week two of season four of the GTA. So last week we had some really good matches, but I think we have a better set this week. Uh, normally we would have a, you know, another coach with us to analyze these matches. However, for whatever reason, the recording that I just recorded with Jasperius, aka coach of the Richmond Rikos, did not save. I'm not sure why. It's working now, for whatever reason. But, yeah, so I literally just hung up with him, and it's not there, so we're going to try this again. <clears throat> so, we're just kind of going to talk about the five matches of the week, obviously, like usual, but uh, we did have two forfeits, so that's why we don't have seven matches to chat about, so hopefully we can get this um, knocked out in maybe less than 20 minutes. That's my goal. I'm going to set a timer so that this will happen. Uh, stopwatch. I'm so professional. All right. Well, anyways, um, this first match is the Charmillionaires versus Feliday. Um, I really like both teams, but Mega Gyarados, I just see, you know, Earthquake from it just hits so hard. There's nothing that can switch into it. There's no resistances and there's no immunities, which is kind of rough. <laughs> it's, it's rough. Um, I definitely would have brought the Rotom. I know that it, like there's a lot of grass presence, but well, I guess with the Mold Breaker, that doesn't matter. So never mind. Uh, Mega, Mega Gyarados is a really good matchup against his team. Excuse me, in general. So we'll go ahead and uh, start the match. Um, Feliday really starts off strong. Really disrupting the Mew with the Leech Seed and Encore, just completely stopping this thing from doing anything. And half of its health is already gone, which is really funny. Um, then he goes for the U-turn, you know, gets priority. Now he does do something that's, I guess, kind of questionable, but he does uh, paralyze it in return. He does lose his, um, his Pachi, or not Pachi, so goodness, to Dene. <laughs> But he does get the para. Um, now here, you know, he's, he did the right thing by staying in, just going for Psy Shock, trying to get rid of that Aromatisse. He was really putting a lot of pressure. So I noticed that Latios is a key player here as well. So right here, I'm not sure what he was running. Maybe it was Roost, Defog, Psy Shock, Draco Meteor, maybe. Um, but either way, he switched in and he lets the uh, Chandelure take out the Whimsicott, which... I guess is fine at that point though he should have known that it was scarfed I guess because I was talking about this last time that it it seemed likely that it would be but at that point he should have known that it was scarfed but here this is where it really like the match should have ended so instead of going for earthquake to break the sash he should have gone for a second uh, uh, dragon dance because he would have outsped the cloister after its shell smash so doing that would have allowed him to potentially take it out and then be able to do enough damage to take out the Venusaur. Because I'm pretty sure right there with another um, Earthquake, it would have destroyed it. So, I mean, he comes in, gets rid of it with Latios. This is where he should have switched out, um, not letting the Chandelure take it out. Skuntank would have taken that handily and would have been able to Pursuit Trap it or Sucker Punch or whatever. He's still able to take out the Aromatis, but again, Latios would have been awesome here because he would have had to lock into uh, Shadow Ball to stop the Skun Tank. But the Memento was also a cool play, but uh, the Charmillionaires, even though he probably wasn't prepared for that type of thing, he did bring Swords Dance, which ended up completely countering that move. So that really worked out for him. In the end, I think it was a good match on both sides, to be honest. Um, but if he had preserved Latios and or the Gyarados with the ways I suggested, he would have won that match handily. Um, probably still would have been a close match, but it could have gone either way, which is really cool to see. Felidae's really gotten a lot better and, uh, I don't know, had a really good matchup. So either way, we'll go ahead and go on to the next match, which is between the Cincinnati Charizards and the New England Parasects. Now, I... I mentioned before as well that I just am still struggling with 
like, I don't know, I said that the Parasex have a one-sided lineup here versus the Charizards have a really good just diversity. And he's got a lot of electric weaknesses, and the only thing he has going for him is Lightning Rod. So Nidoqueen loves this team. <laughs> and to add to that, Dragonair I still struggle with. He does bring the Dragon Rage again, which it doesn't paralyze. It just does 40 HP damage, which doesn't even break a sub as we talked about last week. So he needs to really kind of stop bringing that. But without further ado, I will also talk about the Charizards here. Sub Calm Mind Espeon worked out really well. He even was able to baton pass that into Victini, which really crushed it because of Dragon Rage not breaking a sub. And it just literally, you know, as you can see, did so much to this team. Raichu performed pretty well, but yeah, I mean, Victini just did so much to this team. It, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Um, otherwise it just, like, it was just constantly, like, destroying things over and over. And at this point, like, I don't know. He should have just gone for Thunderbolt, risking the plus one on the Raichu. But, um, let's see. So the Nasty Plot was good on the Togekiss this week, but he should have brought Dazzling Gleam because... Titar just walls it without that, even at plus four, which you'll see here, just constant, like, he should have brought Stone Edge, he should have brought Rock Slide, Titar just crushes, you know, Togekiss in that regard. I don't know why he needed Avalanche and Ice Punch, um, especially since it's not Stab, so Rock Slide or Stone Edge would have been better. Um, I'm not sure why he went for another Nasty Plot here. Uh, when he couldn't get anything out of it. So, honestly, I think this the way the match was played, I think that the uh, Charizards could have won this 4-0. Uh, but what he does here is he lets the T-Tar go down eventually. And then he goes for the secure win at 2-0 by sending out the Victini when the Espeon would have either speed tied or outsped, and it would not have been one-shotted by the... Uh, by the Raichu. So that would have been at least a 3-0, but I don't think that the T-Tar had to go down necessarily. But that's just my opinion. Um, definitely a solid match on Charizard's side and some good stuff shown by the Parasex, but there's just certain like things that they're bringing that I, I don't see how it would work. But either way, I definitely think it's a better match for both of them. And moving on, we'll go to the next match between the Hone Edges and the Wobbuffets. So, first things first, Kyurem Black just completely destroys this team. Kunk loves this team too. Um, <laughs> I mean, other than that, it's just kind of hard to see how the Hana just can get past that. It's just that those two Pokemon just crush his team, sadly. Uh, but starting out, he, start, he leads with Dragonite against the Kyurem Black. I would have just switched out here because it just... It does so much, even with the multi scale, it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna live. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, the Hana just had Air Balloon, which I really liked here because it, it um, he was able to put pressure on Gliscor without Gliscor being able to just one shot it. But I also think that you know, as you see here in a minute, he keeps going for Iron Head, but he had Sword Stance the whole time. But she could have used a lot sooner, and it would have actually like made a huge difference. Maybe it would have prevented the stealth rocks. Probably would have prevented, um, you know, the fact that like he could just switch out into something else. He did get lucky with the iron head crit on the Blastoise, and then Conk just kind of crushed the team. Uh, we talked about Steelix last week as well, as far as um, not mega evolving, which. As you noticed, like, last week, his sturdy was broken, so there was no reason that the that Steelix should not have Mega Evolved there, just for the extra stats. And here, it would have made a huge difference, at least for the time of the match. So, if, if Alakazam had Mega Evolved, it would have done enough damage, even if it didn't kill, enough damage to where the Bullet Punch from Lucario would have taken out the Conk. But... Since that didn't happen, it literally just, like, it was over after that. So it could have at least been a 3-0, but I think that 
it's just like certain things like you know the mega alakazam thing was you know i don't think it would have taken it out because it seemed like conk was uh assault vest so i don't it would have been close but i don't think it would have been a ko but i mean conk and kyron black just put in the finest of work this week and it it showed so Next, we will look at the match between the Richmond Rikos and the Mucks. Um, I really like the Rikos team, and I see some good stuff on the Mucks side. I think if uh, Aerodactyl has Stone Edge, Fire Fang, and Earthquake, you can put in a lot of work here. Um, Toxicroak is a really good and important Pokemon for Clefable. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and start it. Um, some good a good start here on the Raikou side switching into the Volcanion obviously for the water absorb forcing the switch out here and so this was a good move going for T-Wave on the Clefable um, that was actually like a really good start especially considering it could be a setup variant as you'll see and then next Toxicroak comes in and this is where it gets like, oh man, it's just like, it would have worked out so well if he had brought Life Orb on this Toxicroak. The Drain Punch, Life Orb, and the Sucker Punch here would have been enough to take out the Latias. Never mind that it was just a damage roll that, like, determined that he lost his cro Toxicroak. But, like, if he was able to preserve that Toxicroak, he would have been able to handle that Clefable no matter how far set up it was. And that was a really important thing because that's what happened is he just couldn't get past the Clefable as you can see. Like no matter what, it just literally was not able to be killed. And Clef did really well. Now I did think that the Gastro Acid, I think, where was it? Um, no, let's see. Turn 21. No, no, that's not right. I wrote down the wrong turn. Anyways, um, yeah, switching into the Mega Aerodactyl was kind of like the last, like, opportunity he had was, you know, and that, that really kind of stunk for him. So, the Electros having Gastro Acid, I think, which we'll see here in a minute. No, okay. Well, he had Gastro Acid, he used it on the Clef. It would have been really cool if it had Toxic as well, because then it would have stopped the Magic Guard. It would have forced him to have to switch out and all that stuff so it was an interesting answer but it didn't work out since it was already paralyzed and paralysis it doesn't really care about magic guard so but other than that I mean Clef just kind of swept um, and the mucks really did have a chance to at least um, get a lot closer to beating them but not having life form on the toxic croak I think was an important thing and then the Mega Aerodactyl getting swapped in to knocked out was a kind of a crucial moment too. So last we'll talk about the match between the Crocodiles and because of Zubatman. This was also a really good match. Um, as the coach of the Crocodiles, I was really nervous about this match, mainly because of Terrakion, but also Mega Pinsir is always scary. Um, I liked the variety and stuff that I was able to try that week, but I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was surprised to see the Hydreigon, but it ended up doing really well, as you'll see. Um, Arcanine really put in the finest of work here, though. Um, just the, like, Intimidate bulk set really harmed him. Um, having Will-O-Wisp to nerf the Terrakion, even though it was banded, it still would have done tons of damage after burn. Uh, as you can see, you know, and then the chance to crit, of course, with Stone Edge. So, you know, it was just really good here. Um, I had a lot of, like, switch potential and power here, but unfortunately, you know, like, Zapdos worked pretty well in stopping my momentum. Um, Volt Absorb on my Jolteon ended up working pretty well, too. But, let's see. Yeah, I mean, a Assault Vest Jolteon worked out really well. I really liked it. It, uh... It's able to take hits better than you think, and then also having that uh, Volt Switch stopper with Volt Absorb is always nice too. But uh, then Mega Gardevoir starts to come in and just starts demolishing things with Hyper Voice and Psyshock. Um, so that really, you know, did a lot, I think, to his team. But then Terrakion came in, as you can see, and that ended up being a problem. 
But this is where I kind of over predicted and got lucky, honestly. I should have just gone for Earthquake because I switched it into Sackett anyways. But uh, in case you guys don't know, Yoko is actually You Only Cussed Up Once. That's just the fancy name for it that I came up with and tried to be clever with. Never mind that. <laughs> um, so Terekion really puts in the work and I really needed to just hope, hope that he stayed in. Um, and I was just in range for my cuss tap to trigger at 25%. So I should have just gone for Earthquake, but I was like, but what if Hydreigon switches in? What if Sapta switches in? I have to get in some sort of damage here. So I went for Endeavor and that didn't do what I wanted it to and he missed. I got lucky. And so I was able to go for that Earthquake because he missed twice. So that really stunk for him. And so then I just let my Dawn fan go down and here I wanted to see if it was Scarf, so I thought it was at this point, but I mean Jolteon was able to take out the Zapdos, which was pretty awesome. Again, Arcanine just putting in the finest of work. And then here, just seeing like even the assault vest, like oh it just it took that so well. But then I saw that it was scarfed, so I was like, oh great. Well, I feel like I had the opportunity that I needed to switch in and just crush things again. And so I'm switching and I mean, he, I guess he went for Earth Power knowing that was his only way of winning with that sweep. But here was just kind of a last minute decision. If he had gone for Mega Evolution and Quick Attack, he had a really good chance of taking me out. But he wouldn't have gotten the damage boost and I would have been able to switch an Arcanine and burn him. And that's probably what he was thinking. So he knew that he needed to either go for Swords Dance thinking I'll switch or go for a return and do more damage to whatever switches in. I think he was really thinking I would switch out, but for me, I was like, okay, well, I go for Hyper Voice, I don't let him set up. If I switch out, even if even with Intimidate and Burn, if he has the ability to set up two Swords Dances, or one for that matter, an Earthquake does way too much to Arcanine. But maybe he didn't have Earthquake, I don't know. And so I was like, well, I'd rather sack off Britney Spears and go for a hyper voice than risk, you know, him setting up. So that's what I did, and he ended up doing what I thought he would and expecting me to switch. So I was able to pull through there. Uh, it was a really good match. It was really fun, really intense, and I really enjoyed it. And, it, you know, like I said, for all these matches, it was really good through and through. Um, there's still some things that I notice about certain teams, but... I just feel like the quality of play has continued to increase each week and I think this week was a really good like opportunity to kind of learn from those things but also just kind of see how people are performing so well at this point and uh, I just feel like the skill level of everybody's really increased so honestly yeah it's it's been a really good uh, season so far I'm really excited for next week as well we'll go ahead and take a look at the player leaderboard We've got Victini sitting at the top after that sweep. Clefable also at the top from its sweep. Barbarical has a move. Gardevoir got some boost to it. So did Gyarados, I think. Cock got on there. And then everything else just kind of is in the same area as it was before. So regardless, I think it was, you know, I'm repeating myself. But really good matches this week, guys. Um, keep it up. I hope uh, we're helping with these videos and reviews and stuff but either way guys i thank you all for watching and i will see you all next week for week three bye bye thanks for watching guys if you all enjoyed the video go ahead and leave a like and if you want subscribe for more videos i uh, hope to see you all in the future and thank you for watching